Hey Alex, how you doing? You're on mute still. Okay. Said hello, you Janate, like a lemonade. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we got, got a today? newborn on the call. I know, got a newborn on the call. I was like, Mama needed some rest. I'll put this thing on. This is cool. And Matches then, your shirt, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How you been? How's Good. Been? I never had a call with somebody with newborn on it. Hanging, <laughs> just hanging around. I know, right? He's he's listening in. He's listening to dad talk. Like, what's he talking about? He did fall asleep. So is that background fake or real? That you? Oh, have? this is this is one hundred percent real. Oh, where's my other camera? Because it doesn't look clear enough. So I know. Oh, okay. So I've got a little bike hanging over here. I just put it on the other day. I was like, hey, I want to put my bike in there. So maybe I'll get motivated and go out riding. All right. Atomic habits. Is that the yeah, yeah, exactly. really atomic habits? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I was teaching something similar to people mm -hmm. way before the book came out. Nice. Because I was always and like anti-goal person. People like saying, yeah, I, I, I don't like setting goals either. I'm like. <laughs> what? Why yeah. gotta put myself in worry? All right. No. Yeah. It, and the people come to me and they say, "Okay, I want to make a million dollars." I say, "Okay, but let's figure out how to make a dollar first. Right. <laughs> Got to figure out those processes before you can. Yeah, we can get to a million once we figure out how to make a dollar, then yeah. ten, then a hundred, then a thousand, then a hundred thousand. Then maybe we we'll talk about a million dollars. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This is not a game show where you get a million dollars at the end yeah, of the show. Yeah, people like, you know, live in a la la land. <laughs> and they look at somebody else and go, mm -hmm. okay, you make millions of dollars. Okay, but it took me almost 50 years to get here. Exactly. It exactly. didn't happen in one day. No, I, not, I no. didn't go to talk to somebody and say, okay, tell me a secret. He told me a secret. Mm -hmm. I came home for making a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how the world works. No way. No way. No way. So... I'm definitely not humble as they started. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want you to make me humble. Make me humble. I love your, I love the humble zone. Oh, thank you. Um, there's a whole story behind it, but I can't even find the maxim that it's based off of. So in uh, 1995, I was going, uh, I was, uh, you know, just finished high school and I was doing kickboxing in Saudi Arabia. So before I came to the States, so I did kickboxing for like three months and they gave me this booklet and inside there was a maxim and it talked something about being humble and that kind of stuck with me. So in like 2000, when I was creating a company, I was like humble zone. I want to be in the humble zone. <laughs> hmm. So it's, it's just stuck around and I'm like, yeah, so it's kind of like the umbrella company of all the things that I've been doing, but I still, you know. I'm I'm not there yet because I know it takes time, you know, it, it takes time to get there, just like you mentioned. So I'm working, I'm working towards it. To be humble? No, to be, to be standalone, humble zone as a company. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm vice versa. I'm always trying to get from the top to the bottom. Mm. Mm. But... I'm a human behaviorist by trade. Let me just, because you don't know anything about me. Mm -hmm. And obviously I behave, my behavior is extremely like aggressive and out there. That's normal because I believe people have a three different parts mm -hmm. of who they are. It's their behavior. Yeah. Which is 90% of the time is not who they are. Yeah. They have their identity. It's probably closer to who they are. They have mm -hmm. their personality. It's not necessarily who they are either. It's more yeah. like something acquired and conditioned over the years and their experiences that creates mm -hmm. their personality. I don't know if you've heard of Enneagram. I testing. have. I have. I have taken the test on Enneagram. Okay. To figure out who, who, because what my numbers I, are. I was actually part of a sacred organization called the mm -hmm. Fourth Way. Okay. Something that I was attracted to, and most people don't even know of existence of this organization. It was created by Gurdjieff. Mm. He had 
extremely powerful teachings. He had two students like Hitler and Stalin, for wow. example. Okay. So there's a lot of power in what he teaches. Mm -hmm. And 99.9% .9 of the world never heard of him. I don't know who he is, but this sure. is actually where it's from. Oh, wow. Anagram used to be called Fourth Way Anagram. So, and that right. organization is actually sacred. You cannot find it. You cannot just walk in it. Mm -hmm. It took me a year and a half just to find the people who have this organization. Wow. And another year and a half, they were interviewing me in different places of the city. So I want to know where they're located. They would meet me once a week for like an hour meeting. Yeah. It's like two different guys. And I thought they're just screwing with me. I think there's just two guys. There's nobody else. It's just BS. <laughs> it's like for a year and a half. I mean, come on. Wow. Introduce me to the next level. What is yeah, out yeah. there? <laughs> and then after a year and a half, they eventually said, okay, we're just tired to go and meet you all the time. Why don't you just come over? And I came over. It's like, mm. wow, there's actually buildings and people. It's like a big organization. Wow. That nobody ever know what it is. And the way it is, they literally bought four houses in the middle of this like city, but suburban area. Mm -hmm. They're con they're connected and removed the fence and connected four houses. And that's where their like little headquarter is. Nobody oh, lives there. It's like a little headquarter. Yeah. That's where people are meeting for meetings and you know, retreats and all that stuff. That yes. was very interesting, but that's yes. what got me into the like for it's a spiritual organization so mm -hmm. it's very spiritual and i was kind of that was before i got there because they wouldn't let me in so i decided okay i'll become a zen monk yeah because i thought so that was in a problem because it took like a year and a half for them to another yeah yeah and then they finally let me in and said okay this guy's like in too much pain we need to help and 99% about it is about what the people are. Hmm. It's all about people understanding themselves, yes. understanding yourself better. And that's what I've been doing my whole life. I look at myself as a human behaviorist. I don't think I'm a psychologist or a psychiatrist or have any of this training. I understand yeah. human, not because I understand myself, because every single human being is completely different. Oh, 100%. And not only that, they behave not who they are they are in they're in misalignment with who they're supposed to be not who they actually not who they're supposed to be who they oh, even who, think who they, they are who they even are that's right that's right they're not in alignment with who they are yes because they're pretending their behavior to be is completely mm -hmm. misaligned mm -hmm. with who they actually are and what they want to even the message they want to put out doesn't come out very clear. Yeah. There we go. You're like an amazing husband. And your wife is like so lucky. <laughs> yeah, she is very lucky. She's uh, very really lucky. Like she's, she's very lucky. We are, we are very lucky. We are blessed. Yeah. Uh, I, I like your statement. She's very lucky. <laughs> Yeah, so you got a little bit of ego in there too, hiding. Just a teeny bit. I mean, I, I do call myself Super Janet elsewhere, right? <laughs> if you look up Super oh, yeah. Janet, that's, you know, that's the alter ego of humble zone. Like there's like two opposites. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to hold me down. It's interesting, yeah, because that that's pretty much my story. So I'm a human mm. behavior, so I work with who is who. I just... Different difference between me and other human behaviors. I just figure out how to generate income because mm -hmm. I understand the businesses. I use yeah. the energy. Some people don't understand. Let me give you a simple example of energy. So the whole world operates on energy, right? In order for you to get out of the bed, you need to have energy to lift mm -hmm. the bed, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. most people agree that money is energy. They don't understand what it actually is. Everybody right. Can agree but I, I can simplify it for people if i'm gonna tell you right now to come over and clean my yard mm -hmm. it's gonna take you two hours for free just come over and yeah. say okay maybe i would you're a nice guy but i have a lot going on i don't think that's gonna be happening right now right what if i offer you a million dollars for two hours of work you'll find a way to get to my yard pretty quickly. exactly yeah yeah why because mm -hmm. i just offered you a lot of energy right 
in the form of money. So I produce the energy for you to accomplish the task that you would not accomplish in the other way. Mm. So if you're going to go to the store or want to buy something, in the real world, all you're buying is energy in order to make yourself feel better. Mm -hmm. So if you buy something for that you get more energy in return for the money you spend, you feel very good. If you, spy, if you spend more money in return that you're getting, you feel ripped off and very yes. not good. Yes. Because there's no equal exchange of energy. But mm -hmm. you don't want equal exchange. You actually yeah. get a lot more energy back that you're putting in. Yeah. That's why you're looking for discount. Okay. Where can I get the, the better deal? So you want to have better better more yeah. energy in return for you for your exchange of energy. Mm -hmm. Same with the businesses, not only the customers. So obviously you understand that's how the customers come to you. So as employees in the companies, they work if they got the right amount of energy. They want to get the most energy for the amount of work they're willing to put in. So once you take the businesses and fix the energy from all around, mm -hmm. you become successful business. So that's my model of yeah. the business, but it's all about human behavior. As you, as you can see, I've got, I've got some other kids. That's okay. The room shaking. So you're blessed. <laughs> it's like, okay. you? I don't bother me. I don't, I don't get like, right, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, the low, remember, the low, I just low, told low, you low, I'm low. Taoist right here. That's right. <laughs> Taoist, it's very right. hard to get me that. off course or perfect. off my train of thought. So energy. And that's what money is. It's it's just another source of it. People call it a tool. And um, yeah, I look at it as energy because everything is energy. Of, it's more of a flow because because if it's if it like one example that I saw in this video was money. If it's stagnant, it becomes stale, just like because water. there's no energy in there. There's no energy yeah. in it. But if you keep moving the money, that's where cash flow comes from. River banks. It's all like. A water based a analysis. You just said the word. It should be a flow. Mm -hmm. There is no flow. It's there. Yeah. Right. And that's the body. Look at the body. Your body is electrical mechanism. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at a heart monitor, it goes up and down. Up and down. Yep. That's the economy as well. If you look at your heart it monitor is. and you look at the Wall Street, it's the same thing. Like which one is which? Yeah. It's look exactly the same, right? Mm -hmm. It goes up and down. And yep. you're, that's how the heart. If it goes straight up, it's dead. It's dead, yeah. I, man, so I it means that. if you're not going to spend money on anything, mm -hmm. the economy stops. Everybody yes. dies. Everybody There's no jobs, nothing being created. Nobody can do anything. So in order for you to money, to give energy, it has to create the cash flow. The money has to go around. Yeah. But the rich people, the difference between rich people and poor people, poor people looking how to acquire money, and the rich people are looking how to invest money. How to invest money to move it. So it means they're looking how to spend money better. So mm. if you look at a big businesses like Amazon, Amazon has a million employees. Yeah. It's freaking amazing. So and they're saying, okay, it, that's that's just makes a lot of money. Like it, it just really doesn't make that much money because yeah. money is in the company. And that's just, that's, that's just a million employees that they directly own. It doesn't even count. The yeah, number of vendors. Marketplace yeah. vendors that work with Amazon. Yeah, you multiply. It's probably, the Amazon probably provides 10 million jobs. Yeah. And if you understand how much energy it creates, that's the reason the Bezos is so rich. Wow. Dude, that's just blows my mind and something that's been coming up for me for the past couple of days it's like hey i i have my sister she has four kids or three kids and you know they're all under they're all in the in their teens and i'm like how can i provide for them or bring them into my business train them hey this is how the internet world works here are some trains that you can take that this is how you can help me and in return, I can give you some energy. I can give you some money because she's also going through a divorce. And she's also like, oh, you know, he's like, okay, I can't pay for this. I can't for pay for this. You got to move out. There's a lot of 
conflict there. I'm like, how can I resolve that conflict if I provide avenues for them to generate energy and generate money, then it takes them out of that equation that takes them out of that conflict. They can be on their own. And I it's started... very interesting because I actually do. I, my neighbors do not have any problems, but I'm mm -hmm. trying to use my neighbor's kids because I have my own kids to figure yeah. out how to improve their quality of life and trying yeah. to bring into my world and figure mm -hmm. out how to make it life easier yeah. on them. Because, and with your sister-in-law, okay, I'm not a psychologist. My sister, I'm looking yeah, everything my sister. from there. I'm a business person, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking from a psychology perspective, so not from a business perspective. Sure. From a business perspective, what she's going through is like this balance of energy. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. So the way the world works, you lose energy or you gain energy. So you feel good, your energy goes up, you smile, you're happy. And even if you're from a body posture, when the people are happy, they look up, they smile, right? When you smile, yeah. you absorb more air, it creates more energy in your body, your brain works better, mm -hmm. your eyes more open, you feel better. It's basically physiology, what they call, right? Yeah. yeah. It all comes from getting more energy in you. So when you get angry or frustrated, you're actually pushing all the energy out, mm -hmm. you look down, you cannot breathe. So you feel more stress, you have no energy. Once your sister understand that, yeah, that all this is just the energy, and whatever's going on around her is not real. No, it's, it's just not, the way yeah. she reacts. She and, what's, and what's insane, what's interesting is that she's been married for 20 years, and she's like, I've, I've listened to everything, I've done everything by their ways, and guess what? I'm in the same place that I started. Sure, I have three kids now, and it's it's not just going. It's not going. It's not going good. So, you know, they've already filed for divorce. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, but yeah, that's yeah. the energy. Because that's she, the energy, right? That, it takes like a bad energy. She's trying. Okay, here's that one. So make it easy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mister Lao Tzu, he said very wisely, when you focus on your past. Mm -hmm. You'll get depressed. You focus on your future, you'll have anxiety. Yes. So the only thing you can enjoy is right now, right, right this now, moment. Exactly. And she's healthy. She's got three kids. She's got a brother who cares about her. She's in a better position than ninety-nine percent of the people in the world. Yeah. So what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, give you anxiety. Stop thinking about it and do what you need to do. Just do if you it, focus exactly. on the energy right now. Yeah. You're not gonna get anxiety about the future, right. or if you're gonna stop thinking about the past, you're not gonna go into depression to yeah. think, okay, I lost all my life. It's irrelevant. It's a yeah. You're not gonna you're, get it back. You're here already, yeah. It's not like you're gonna get your 20 years back. They're not gonna write you a check. <laughs> Say here's your 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So there's no That's point right. to be depressed about something. No, no, she's not depressed. She's she's already accept it like okay this is i just want to move on i just want to get out of this situation that's and, the moving on believe right. it or not it actually leads her into anxiety oh so just be present like hey let me just do what i'm doing right now i just and focus just on right now. don't worry about what's forward. happening don't right think now. about moving forward because yeah worry about and thinking about moving forward already yeah. creates anxiety yeah it does so if I tell you we want we want to go for a marathon a week from now, and you never ran more, of, do you ever run? <laughs> not 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 a whole lot, no. Okay, so I'm telling you a week from now we're gonna go for a marathon. Yeah, that will create a lot of anxiety if you think oh, you absolutely. have to go. Absolutely. Which Don't is that's yeah. what she does. That's what she's doing. Yeah. Because she thinks, okay, I need to move forward. This is what I need to do. But the more she thinks she needs to do. Yeah. The more the anxiety is going to give her. Yeah. We, we just keep telling her no matter what he says, just ignore, 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 and just focus on the present. That's because it. That's there it. is no, there's nothing no. else you can control. You cannot control anything. You cannot control past or future. So what's, what's really cool is that, so I've been thinking about how can I engage these younglings, these teenagers? Cause, cause I have a huge family. I have, you know, seven siblings, 
tons of cousins, tons of teenagers. And the universe provides because I've been thinking about it. And then yesterday, I talked to this gentleman, or day before yesterday, Jonathan Harris. He's He has nine kids himself. And he created this program where he's teaching kids, kids how to be entrepreneurs themselves. So he's got a program called Parent Their Passion. I'm like, holy smokes, that's amazing. One story that I keep going back to is his... 16 year old kid now he's been he wanted to do voiceover acting when he was 11 so he's like go do it let's go let's go find out so he started voice acting he started editing and then jonathan's friend had a podcast he's like hey, i need an editor so then his son started editing so now he's been editing a podcast for five years he's a video editor and he's he's just 16 like he's already established himself in ways that's just mind-blowing. So it's like this program is exactly what all these kids need just to look at what they're passionate about and just go deep into it and instead of going through college, figuring out what they want versus what they don't want and then changing careers over after 20 years. Like, oh my God, I should have been doing this instead of what I ended up going into. It's amazing. I love this. It's I literally have this conversation with my neighbor, mm-hmm. the kid next door. He's 16. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out to help him. He's a genius. He's like Albert Einstein level. Wow. And I'm saying, you know, I would love to help you to develop, but I'm not a mathematician. I'm not mm-hmm. an engineer. Yeah. I don't know if the understanding yourself and the human behavior is something that's that challenging for mm-hmm. you. But unfortunately, that's all I can offer. Yeah. Is I can add another thing. I'm saying if you're interesting, I can we can start working together because I already taught him over all the philosophies that I know. Yeah, yeah. So it what is the next level? And he said, okay, we'll see if it's gonna intrigue them enough because Mm -hmm. he's extremely like I ran his numbers because when I work with people, not only mentor but even in the business, I run all these numbers so I can understand the capability of what this person is capable of. Yeah. Yeah. That would not give them the path that they cannot achieve and put them on a path that's realistic. And <laughs> for them, that, that's for truth. Bless you. Yeah. So easy for them to understand, easy for them to achieve the results. Because I've been doing like 1% improvements. I would be telling people 1% yeah. improvements. It's not what I created. It's been created for thousands of years from the yeah. ancient Greece. They were saying just do yeah. one step at a time. Mm-hmm. Journey one of thousand time. steps, you know, <laughs> starts with this journey of thousand miles, starts with a single step. Yes. I mean, just do one step. Mm-hmm. Do not stop. We eventually will get there. Yeah. When we get there is irrelevant because exactly. people focusing again on the future. The future is irrelevant. What is irrelevant is the journey. Because when you get there, you're probably not going to be happy anyways. <laughs> like, what's next? You're always going to ask, what's next? Yeah, what's next? so the yeah. journey is not important. The actual yeah. destination is not very relevant. Mm-mm. Because, again, because I'm a Taoist, it's very simple. Like in Buddhism, yeah, it's very simple. What's going to happen tomorrow? You're yeah. going to get old, you're going to get sick, and you're going to die. <laughs> That's it. That's what's going to happen tomorrow. It's almost certain. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. What are you doing today? Yeah, I said, uh-huh. if I don't enjoy today, I and I always tell people, you know, tomorrow, mm-hmm. not, not maybe for your young kids, for, but for somebody like our age. Yeah. From today on, today is your best day. Today is because the best you're day. the youngest today. Tomorrow is just going to get older and sicker yeah. and weaker <laughs> and eventually going to die. Oh, my God. I love that. So the, the, it's not you're not going to have a better day that you're going to have today. Right. So it's by helpful. ignoring today, you're ignoring your life, you mm. just wasting your life and it's going to go very, very fast. Because you said you had graduated in 92, it makes you, what, 46? Yes, 46. <laughs> so you're 46 years old. So that 46 went pretty fast. Yes, it goes if fast. You look back. So you're not... It, oh, as yeah. you can see, it goes a lot faster as you get older. It doesn't get slower. It does. It doesn't faster. slow down because because you see all the kids around you growing up. My oldest is twelve years old, right? And my youngest is 
seven days was that eight days old now yeah it's 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 um it's amazing to watch them grow it, it tells us how fast time grows and, and I'm, i look at all of my photos like from from when he was born from what from when he's born now and i can see the diff clear difference in the photos like oh time's not stopping for anybody for anybody so what do we do today yeah, and that's it's only what important because it's irrelevant what's going to happen. So at the end of the day, all we're trying is to feel good. You yeah. want to make a million dollars or a billion dollars or a bigger house. It's, mm -hmm. it's just the feeling we're trying to acquire, which yeah. is like dopamine, right? Yeah. Trying to raise our dopamine to feel good about mm. that moment. So which is if you feel good about the moment right now, there's you don't have to worry about you it. Don't, yeah, you at the end, because it's still not gonna last very long. Everything is temporarily on this planet, including right. life. I was, uh, I'll always give people this example. When you go to the graveyard or cemetery, because uh, last month my <laughs> uncle passed away, I had to travel to California, and you look at the gravestones, and all you see is the date when they were born and the date when they died. And there's a little dash in the middle. That's That's our life. <laughs> That little dash is our life. Right. And people are like, oh my God, you're so right. It's amazing. Yeah. So the people, do, they're ignoring the dash. Yes. You don't want to ignore the dash. Man, I love that. I love that so much. So. Oh, what can I do for you? How can, how we can I be of service to you? I was just going to ask that too. Same question. <laughs> Oh, I love, I love I'm, the conversation. I'm trying to spread the word. And that's what I do. That's yeah. that's what I just told you. That's what I'm offering to people. When I go to the business, I told you, I'm just looking at the energy. Yeah. Fixing the energy of the business and help them to understand people because people have, have three parts the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. So my philosophy of it is the behavior, identity, and personality, which is I measure on three different levels and it's give me a better understanding of a people and then once i talk to them i first send yeah. their energy because it still doesn't tell you anything about the person what they understand even if you have a perfect understanding of a human being mm -hmm. you have to understand their energy because their flow of the energy is like our veda right for example the flow of energy is extremely important because yeah. humans behave depends on their energy yeah, it just does. It so does. if you have a bad energy, you might be angry. You might have a good energy. You might be happy, but you're exactly the same human being. Right. I'm just interrupting you at the moment that you're in a different level of energy. Yeah. But you're not. You might not be aggressive, or you might be too passive. Mm -hmm. It all might be wrong. Yeah. It really depends on the flow of the energy. It does. There's uh, there's this new thing that I've been studying or learned about almost a year ago called human design have you heard of human design no i never heard of it oh my god you're gonna love it because they talk about energies okay i'll make and, a note human design uh jovianarchive.com i think is the site that's okay you can say me later just make a yeah yeah note right now i don't want to spend too much time no no so it's really cool uh and according to them they said every human being falls into four different categories. Either you're a manifester, uh, a projector, a generator, or a reflector. And they're talking about energy. So this gentleman, Ra Uruhu, combined chakras, uh, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, astrology, all these things together. And then he said, your human design or your human design chart is based on the day, the place, and the time that you were born. I use that. Boom. That's how I identify the energy, behavior, okay. and identity. So you already know what's going on in there. And it's, it's just so beautiful because it just t it tells you who you are and how you're supposed to be. How not supposed to be who you're supposed to be like who you are as a human being 
without removing all the behaviors, removing, yeah, removing all the, the personality, the right. personality all yeah. the environment. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's all really the horrible. conditioning, all your personality that you acquire from your condition. Yes. Yes. So yeah. you're going you're gonna to enjoy that. It's, it's really yeah, that, that's kind of what I do already. I love it. I love it. Because I use, yeah, it's very similar to what I do. I, because I was a part of the fourth race, I have a little bit deeper understanding of the personality, how it's reflect, extremely important to understand. Yeah. Because people cannot just remove their personality. Because if we're going to go to basic of psychology, your psychology mm -hmm. developed up till age of 14, it will never change. You cannot right. change it. Yeah. So if you, if maybe if you're dealing with a kid who's like three, four, five, six, seven years old, mm -hmm. because that's the initial psychology is being developed by the age of 14, I guarantee you're the same person that you were at the age of 14. The only difference yeah. is some experiences that yeah. you're a little bit more intelligent, but your personality didn't change. You're the same guy. Same person. And I guarantee if I'm going to put you in school reunion with all your friends, at age of 14, you're going to literally start acting <laughs> like you're 14 different. years old. Yeah. The reason you're acting differently because you're trying to match up mm -hmm. with the people of the age was more mature. Yeah. But it's literally not natural to you. Yeah, it's not. Man, because you actually want to be a kid. Oh, my God. Tell me. Tell me. I mean, why else would I have a, a I Lego box? <laughs> Of Back to the Future, I just got the uh, Lego box of uh, Transformer, Optimus Prime just came in. I know, <laughs> My kid's kid. like, "What are we you gonna build? What are we gonna build?" I'm still a kid. I, I just, I just love that stuff. You yeah, know, I've never met you before. I'm just telling you how yeah. you are, just based on a few minutes that we're talking. Yeah, it's amazing. So that's, Man. that's the difference. And that's, that's the service. That's what I want to leave after me, some kind of a way of the people understanding themselves a little bit better. Yeah. Because Socrates to try to do that 2,500 years ago, he didn't succeed. Yeah. No, it, it takes a lot longer than that. Right. So, and the whole idea of Socrates was that life is only makes sense and importance. If you can leave something after yourself, because that dash will not dis will disappear yeah if you leave something afterward yeah but if there's nothing left after you all you're gonna be is a dash so true and um so i'm a muslim and uh you know prophet muhammad is remembered every minute of the day every single day and there was a so when he was when he was um you know preaching in mecca the non-believers told him people are going to forget who you are and then he was kind of depressed so then god you know he revealed the surah that nobody's ever going to forget you they're going to forget everybody else and it's true because every minute of the day in different parts of the world there's the adhan which is a call to prayer is being called and the second verse is ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah wait so his name is being repeated every minute and every hour of the day because as time moves on the sun moves on there's different times of the pray prayer <laughs> so it's amazing it's amazing what he's left behind just like you know we we you know jesus we know different people who leave behind things so it's amazing yeah it's very philosophical i love this philosophy i love philosophy and you know talk deep talk for sure it's, you, know, it's, you have the socrates if you go in the ancient creek we're going to go 2500 years ago they're mm -hmm. saying the best life you can have is the life of a philosopher because that's a deeper level than just materialistic level. Yes. If you just live for a materialistic world, your law world is always going to be empty. You're always yeah. going to be wanted more. And you cannot leave anything after yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So a philosophical world, you can actually create something for somebody else to follow, live some kind of philosophy. Even though I'm extremely practical person when I go into the business because mm -hmm. philosophy doesn't help much. Right. But it's all based on philosophies. It is, yeah. 
Yeah. Even my energy is just a philosophy. Mm -hmm. it, I don't it, even know how it works. It, it comes I don't know down how to I make people happy. Do we believe it or not? Right? How much do we believe that energy versus? We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Exactly. Yeah, with the energy, you don't have a choice whether you believe it or not, because you're gonna believe it whether you want it or not. Hmm. Because you're either gonna have energy or not. If you're gonna start actually observing yourself, you're gonna be in the next level of consciousness. Yeah. And start actually observing yourself. You see your energy, how it goes up and down. You start observing why. Yeah. You don't have to believe it. It's very practical. No, you don't. Man. You have to believe it in God because you can never touch it. But energy, it's very easy to observe. <clears throat> you're tired or you have a lot of energy, what happens? Mm. So you're extremely tired. You've been working all day, dealing with the kids. You're like exhausted in the evening. Then your best friend called you out of a blue, like, which you haven't oh, seen in yeah. 20, 30 years. All of a sudden, you have full of energy. Yeah. Where does it came from? It's amazing. So, so it's it's very complex and very interesting. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. So how can I help? And uh, you said, how can you help? I'm a business person, so all I know is at this point, I, and if you remember, I was mentioning like mm -hmm. during, we had actual opportunity to talk even twice in the same yeah. room, yeah, plus outside. Right. I'm looking for the way out of the business. I want to stay like in the philosophical world and I want to mm -hmm. mentor people. Mm -hmm. How not just learn about themselves and others, but how it's actually can improve their economy because I'm looking at businesses energy as well. Yeah. How the money works, how they can generate more income, a lot more income. Yeah. Because they can make millions or billions. I don't know what their ability, if they have the ability, because right. I have people who do have this ability. I have mm -hmm. people who maybe make five, ten thousand dollars a month max. Which is okay too, because mm -hmm. your quality of life really doesn't depend on materialistic things. As long as you understand that you generate enough to be happy. Yeah and position your expense level at your level of abilities, you can be happy for the rest of your life. Uh, exactly, yeah. If you're going to put yourself as a position of where you want to be, doesn't match your abilities, you're going to die. It's going to be just hard, yeah. like somebody decides to swim in the ocean, right mm -hmm. across the ocean. What's going to happen? You're going to yeah, die. Yeah. Just matter of time until you're going to drown. Exactly. <laughs> because you're going against your abilities to yeah. perform. But if your ability is to swim over like small creek, it should be easy for you. You can enjoy yeah. it. It doesn't have to be hard in order to, for you to actually do it. But if you don't swim at all, you're not going to move forward. No. So you do have to swim, but how you much you need to swim, how much energy you have to swim, you have to understand if there is a limit to it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's nobody can swim across the ocean. No. It's, 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 so you yeah, do it's, have a limit. Yes, we all have. Everybody a has a limit. Some people have a billion dollar level, some at a million dollar level. Yeah, yeah. Have a ten thousand dollar level. Yeah. So that's that's what I want to do. Just because I'm a businessman, and even though I love philosophy and business and human behavior, mm -hmm. I've been a businessman since I'm fourteen years old. So I'm like yeah. fifty-one now. I was born in seventy-one. So mm -hmm. I've been for. 50 years almost my life my, all my whole life is businessman so it's easier for me to understand business because i've created a lot of concepts that have been sold for billions of dollars yeah i created the idea of vitamin water that was sold for 4.3 billion dollars and i've created a lot of different things i actually have a solution for the starbucks if they're gonna come to me i'll tell them <laughs> <laughs> you know how we're Schultz telling to give me a call. I'll make him a very, very happy man. <laughs> I don't know how we're Schultz and I don't know how to get to him. I don't really care to go yeah. there after yeah. him. But if somebody knows, I can help him. I okay. think they're doing everything wrong. Starbucks. I think he's putting too much stress on himself and mm. going completely after different things that he should. But I've took businesses and I've helped them to turn around when they were mm. stressing, even in the worst economies. Like I've saved the guy who was in real estate, Baron, mm -hmm. who was about to go under in 2009, mm -hmm. because 2008 crash. Can you imagine yeah. one of the richest people in the world? But all of a sudden, 
nobody wants to rent your properties. Yeah, it's and you have billions of thousand square feet to rent out. People don't understand. There's a lot of risk to those real estate barons. Yeah. So I came up with a model for him that actually worked at that economy that he was actually generating a lot more money than he did. Wow. And all these places were full. Who's this Darren who? No, I cannot say his name. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, he'll, of course. yeah, I'm not allowed to say. I can tell you what I did. Right, what you did. No, no, it makes sense. Got it. That makes yeah, sense. because of NDA I signed. I cannot no, no, mention. no, don't, you don't need to. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but um, I created a completely different model for him. He's actually one of the richest people in the world. Wow. I created the model to save him and survive the 2008, 2008, 11, when the real estate was going down. Yeah. And 40% of his real estate was not filled. Not only he sustained that time and now is double in price since then, yeah. but he's actually the most important thing was I actually generated him more money more than during that depression of real estate that he was making before he met me. That's amazing. And that. it's completely shifting because understanding with the money is energy and how to use money and how to yeah. have all these investors because all the rich people have other rich people who gives them money to invest. That's how they're rich. That's yes. including everybody, Bezos, Bill Gates, they're all everybody, investors. Exactly. Yeah. So how to keep those people happy? when everybody's running away from real estate business. That's, so that's what my ability I can see those things and see the way how to fix them. Hmm. I'm better at the bigger things because there's more value I can right. produce because money is energy. So I make more money and produce more energy. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and they can produce more jobs and everything else, right? So if I create a little energy, I just don't feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm not interested in people come to me to tell me I want to make $10,000. I was like, right. This is not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that totally I, makes sense. I, I can tell you how to make a million dollars. I'm really not interested to tell you how to make 10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars because it's, there's not enough energy in it for me. Right. Right. I don't feel fulfilled and I don't feel it's like, it's not a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. It's not interesting for me. And I don't feel that I'm actually helping anybody by doing that. Yeah. I might feed one person. Like my last project, I had a guy, I've helped him get a 50 people. He was drowning, like financially, he didn't know how to survive. Not only I fixed his business, but he had now 150 people working for him. So I just increased his business. Yeah. That he could feed 100 more families. So that's the way I'm looking at the world. So if I gotta go and help the guy just to pay his bills, it really doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't do anything. Doesn't do me. <laughs> doesn't do anything good. So that's well, that's what I do. I don't know. Well, I love that. 